Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Well, oh, there you are. Okay. Welcome all of you who may be watching us as we're streamlining or as you may be watching later in the day through various means, smoke signals, Morse code, however it may be. Uh, we're glad that you're uh, joining us as we share together on this day. There's a phrase in the Bible, Psalms 122, says this, I was glad that when they said to me, what are some things that make you glad when they say to you? Anybody? I'll tell you, the number one phrase that means the most to people that they're the gladdest to hear is when somebody says, you've lost weight. <laughs> That's the number one thing that, that you, now along that list of the ten most Pleasant statements is this one, and I don't know where it is, but all is forgiven. That is also a free one. But that's not what it says in Psalms 122. It says, I was glad when they said to me. What did they say? Anybody remember? Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go up into the house of the Lord. Right. It's a song of ascent. It's a song that they sang as they were traveling to the church. How many of you sang on your way here this morning? No? Did you? Oh, right. It's an old country song. Do you remember the name of it? I forget. I just sang with it. You sang along with them, all right. Yeah. Nobody sings along with me, but uh, that's uh, that's all right. But but the joy. So we're glad that you're here today. Whether you're here physically or whether you're here with us in viewing, uh, this is a day that we can share and celebrate together. So we rejoice uh, that you've come up to the house of the Lord. All right. We'll have our. Uh, special is it that next? Special music. That's what we're going to have our whatever. Yes. Okay. We'll do it. <laughs> Just do it. Sleepover nights, comforting arms, magical 
A little child was sitting at the table, busily working with crayons, pencils, drawing tools, and just intent on what they were drawing. And a parent came along and said, what are you doing? What are you doing, little Dylan? And no, I didn't say that to them. Uh, but they came along and they said, what are you drawing? And they said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the parent said, nobody knows what God looks like. The little child said, they will when I'm done. <laughs> See, we, we have that. Even our, our picture, the corner of Solomon's head of Christ, um, it reflects uh, a certain culture. Werner Solomon used a relative as a model for his, his uh, painting of, of the head of Christ. So the, we kind of do that. When I was in seminary, uh, I had a, a student from Nigeria in Africa, uh, John Oduro. Uh, and, and he, uh, in his room, had a picture of Christ. He had woolly hair, dark skin, uh, larger lips. Uh, he looked like John Oduro. That was a mother and child uh, picture. Uh, when I was in Oklahoma with the Indians, uh, I had a picture of Jesus kneeling in the garden praying for any buckskins. We, we tend to draw Jesus as we see ourselves. And, and there's nothing wrong with that any more than there is with a child and a teddy bear. It gives us some sense of seeing somebody. A little child was sent to bed. Uh, not because they were bad, just it was bedtime. And, and uh, they kept coming downstairs. And the parent would send them back up again. And, and they said, uh, we'll give him the name of Johnny. Little Johnny, you have to go to bed. But Johnny said, I'm scared. And the parent said, but God is with you. You don't have to be afraid. And Johnny said, but I want somebody with a face. Mm -hmm. mm, you know? And so we, we picture God as best we can. That's not idolatry. That's our, our human weakness. And God understands that. Now, there are people who uh, have idols. Now, I brought one here. Uh, some of you may have seen this Tigger. idol. Tigger. 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 Yes, Tigger. George is telling me about it, and I'm thinking, oh, this stood up on, see, yeah. this stood up and, and went Yahoo, uh, you know, and, and stuff like this one does it. This one dances. And you can go, please, do it again. See? Now, I, I'm not really terribly, shut up. Uh, I'm not terribly attached to that one. Uh, and he keeps on going until the boundary goes down. But there, there, there were things in the Bible that people got attached to, like golden calves and uh, pictures and statues, and, and those things that they felt made them special. And God says, you're not better than the others. You're only, you're only significant because I've set my love on you. That's, that's what it says in Deuteronomy in the seventh chapter. Not because you were more powerful than the other nations. That wasn't why I showed you. Not because you were more numerous than the other nations. That wasn't why I chose you. Not because you were better even. Whoa, that lives us out. Better than the other nations. I chose you because I set my love on you. And, and that's, that's what it's all about. And, and in God sending his love, he wants us to be like him. He doesn't want us to make him like us. He wants us to be like him. And in the children's talk yesterday, as I talked a little bit, you'll have to go to it to see some of those ways in which we can be like God. So you have to tune in on your webpage. I'm not going to tell you anything more about it than that. Okay. All right. Who has a joy today? Okay. I'm glad Emily's here because I'm part of the mission uh, people, and Emily is our fearless leader, and she does a great job. <laughs> but one of my favorite checks to write is to join hands. Yes. Every month I write one for two hundred dollars, and I'm happy because it goes to help other people. July I wrote one for two thousand for shoes, and every month Mike Burns, I guess his name, yeah, Mike Burns, 
That's a no bag. Thank you, Snyders. Snyders, you're awesome. Snyders, you rock. Snyders, yeah. fantastic. I just have to share this with the congregation because, like I said, this is one of my favorite checks to write because I know it's going to help other yeah. people. Yeah. This is my joy. And this Emily, thank you for being a great leader. <laughs> this is our joy, indeed, to be a part of, of sharing in that way, which is, again, to give you again, a little bit about what God is all about. He's the God who gives and gives and gives. George! I'm glad many of us is back in church again. Yeah. Now, I, I have to say, I'm, I have reservations about being glad that you're here, uh, <laughs> but uh, you're, you are, and, and we rejoice. I'm glad we're back. Well, good health for you, today, both of you. You've been through a lot. Other joys. Um, Sandy. Um, Bob and I uh, went to Ashburn, Virginia this week to see our daughter and family in their new home. Uh, the people that uh, they are renting this for for three years are in Australia. They have been missionaries at times to Nigeria and other places, but uh, the father is working for the Department of State, so right now they're in an area of Australia. They have four children, and um, they, there was a lot of people who were in line to rent their home. And uh, our daughter and family um, were the lucky ones to take over their home, which is a beautiful place. And they're in like a cul-de-sac, and so there's lots of children. And, um, and so, you know, it's a wonderful place. It's not very far from where they lived before, but um, th this is their new home. And so uh, that family, um, you know what I mean, gave it to someone yeah. they would take care of, but they're doing good work and teaching their children other cultures all along the way. And they're all very, four very young children. I also, that's our joy, uh, also concerned to keep uh, the uh, people uh, in the West and many other states for the fires. Uh, our sister has had, um, my sister has had a, a few days of fresh air in Santa Cruz, but mostly it's very dark. The street lights stay on. Our son in Redwood City also, uh, the street lights are on like all day because yeah. of the poor air quality, the, the uh, low, the, the smoke. Um, and we have a, a great niece and great nephew uh, that had to come home from Oregon and Washington. Uh, and so they're doing their college studies uh, in Santa Cruz where it's still not good, but uh, it was too chancy in the places that yeah. they were, um, you know, going to school. So continue to keep all those people in prayer and for the senselessness of so many of them started by uh, possibly arson and other things. Um, but. Um, uh, so, you know, that is our, our prayer as well. Yeah, it's our prayer. Uh, yes. uh, Lisa. Uh, just on that, um, Will DeVore is in Colorado fighting oh, fires, so I know Hope and the, their families asking for prayer too. Mm -hmm. He will probably be there the whole month of September. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, it, the, the smoke is reaching to the East Coast. I mean, it's that. Remember, some of you won't remember, Dylan, you probably don't remember when Mount St. Helens blew the top off and one third of the mountain disappeared. But you remember that? Yeah, okay. Um, but that, that, that ash came all across. Uh, it's hard to imagine something that big. I actually have ash from that at home. You did? Yeah. Uh, my uncle at the time lived in California and he sent me a because they had more, obviously they were closer to it out of Sacramento, and they actually sent me a packet of ash from Mount St. Helens. Well, God almost sent you a pack of it, too. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, it, it just hurt. But the smoke is, is going across. Most of it's going across Canada because of the current, uh, as opposed to here. Ethel. I want to thank uh, my family for being so nice to me. Uh, Ethel. I don't know why they do that, but yes, go ahead. Obligated to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they have to be thanked when they do that. They should be. Like that. 
Even our children, we should thank when they do those things for us. Amen. Yes. Thank you. I have a lot of grass to pick up now because my you hear that, Dwayne? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have a grass thing uh, that I'll pick it up. They grass catch it. yesterday. I have to wait until yeah. it gets a little dry. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, no, I there's many blessings a person has, and we need to thank God about it because some people don't have that. That's right. And uh, I'm fortunate that way. Yeah, we and we rejoice with you in that. Family is a is a great thing. Well, they said about going out to eat, <laughs> and I I said okay because we like to walk to that bread and light, and. Uh, Afterwards, then Van started to drive, and I don't know where all we were. <laughs> Did you see the great arch? I know. <laughs> I know it was because I couldn't go to the fair. Yes. I could have went and not listened. <laughs> I can't imagine that at all. God was pretty smart when he started it out that way. Yes, Diane. I'd like us to lift up Donnie Moyer again. He is um, going to be having at least two more surgeries. Um, when they removed the tumor, it caused um, paralysis in his face. So I don't know the name of the procedure. Some well made, but they take something from the thigh and to put it to the face to create nerve activity again. So we need to keep him in prayer. I don't know the date on it yet, but... Continue prayers, please. This is our prayer. Brenda. All right. I, I had a call about our sister, Kathy. Um, she, uh, she had a double mastectomy. She had breast cancer. And she decided to do reconstruction, you know, reconstructive surgery. And she's still in the hospital since, I think it was Tuesday. Uh, she's on a respirator. Every time they try to pull it out, it doesn't. Um, they're hoping maybe by Monday maybe they can pull it out and get still not sure so uh, just keep her in your prayers now, now who is this? this is my sister her name is Kathy Smith okay. Gloria's sister yeah, yeah. she's from Lancaster and I also have another one and I'm sure many of them you know Carl Rumball who was of course I don't know if anybody's seen August 30th. He was the kindest man. He was a custodian at Susquehanna for years. Actually, class of 98, which included my son, yeah. had him 98. I was 78. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, class of 98 down here had him speak. All the big wigs didn't like it, but they stood by him and he gave right. an excellent speech. And it just shows it doesn't matter if you're a custodian, teacher, what. Everybody matters. Yeah. And just like to keep that family in prayer too. There was a, a, a car mechanic um, had just a simple small garage out in Ohio, I think it was, someplace. And uh, over the years, he had saved his money. And when he died, he left it to a college out there that was able to provide one. It was over a million dollars that he saved just as you know, working on cars and stuff, but provide scholarships for over 100 students to go to that university. So, yeah, we, we should. God says don't despise the day of small things. Yeah, because they can be that great. Yeah. Any other toys or concerns as we go to prayer? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your grace and, uh, and for the surprising ways in which you come to us. We thank you for the gift of family that gives us care and support um, for uh, being able to share their joys of good things that happen to them as well as being able to help them in times of their difficulties. Um, we thank you for uh, the ways in which you have utilized the people on one coast to help the people on another to share in a common struggle of saving lives as well as property and, and uh, of your world as it burns.
pray for strength and wisdom. Uh, we pray for um, the struggles that our world goes through in this time um, with people in far countries uh, battling evil uh, and trying to provide for uh, a hope and future for many peoples that have struggled through uh, being parts of conflicts for many, many years. Guide our world leaders uh, towards ways of resolving uh, this brokenness and this uh, evil that seems to pervade. Thank you for this day in which we've gathered here, uh, for the strength that you give to us and the hope that is ours through Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Uh, then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So, my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. May God bless to us the reading of his word. If you study some ancient mythology, the Romans and the Greeks had all this pantheon of, of gods uh, that they had different names for. For instance, Jupiter is Zeus. Uh, he's Jupiter in Roman mythology. He's Zeus in Greek mythology. Uh, you've got Juno and, and, and Vespera and, and different ones that are there uh, that go back and forth in terms of that. There's a part of mythology that has to do with a uh, a god or a titan named Prometheus. Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to humans so that they would have warmth. They would have light. And they could cook. And Zeus was angry with Prometheus for doing that and so bound him to a rock where uh, an eagle came in the daytime and would eat up his liver, tear up his, his abdomen and eat his liver. And, and then at nighttime it would heal. And the next morning the eagle would come back and do it again. And, and it was just over and over and over again. It sounds like a great God, doesn't it? It sounds like somebody you'd really like to be close to. Uh, there, there was such jealousy, uh, such envy, such favoritism among the gods that we would look and say, what a disgusting lot. Who would want to be a part of, of that? And yet the Romans were that way. But there were Romans that, that didn't want to be that way. You remember the story in, in the scripture where a centurion sends a servant to Jesus and says, come and heal. One scripture, it seems to be the centurion's child, and another it seems to be his servant. You're not exactly sure, maybe a mistranslation there. But in any event, why would this centurion, who has his own Roman religion, why would he be drawn to this God of the Hebrews? They were called God fearers. They, they never were to become totally Hebrew. They couldn't go into the synagogue and certainly not into the temple. But they could be out in the court of the Gentiles. Remember where Jesus turned over the tables and said, this should be a house of prayer for all peoples and you've made it a den of thieves. He was a god fearer. That was the title that was given. There was something that drew him from his Roman pantheon to this, this god of the Hebrews who seemed to have compassion, who seemed to have feeling for his people that he didn't find in, in that Roman religion. Uh, C.S. Lewis was a part of a, well, he was a brilliant man. He taught at, at, at Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, brilliant. Uh, they, they called him Dons. Uh, you probably would understand that, Bob, because uh, I've called you Don sometimes, and that was a respectful term. Uh, but that meant a, a leader of, of the, of the people and uh, of the students and, and they had a club called the Inklings uh, and I guess it took its name from I have an inkling of a thought but these were ac academic people who got, sat around and talked deep things and one day C.S. Lewis was not there because of another uh, commitment and he came in on, on the, the group that was talking uh, J.R.R. Tolkien who wrote the uh, Lord of the Rings and and that was part of that same group as was C.S. Lewis's brother, who was a soldier. Uh, there, there was a, a varied group. But they were discussing religion on this one particular occasion as C.S. Lewis came into the group uh, returning from his commitment. And, and they were trying to figure out what made Christianity different from the other religions of the world. 
why was Christianity different? And, and they couldn't come up with an answer. And they said to, to Lewis, what is it that makes Christianity different? And Lewis, without hardly even thinking, said, that's an easy one. Grace. Grace makes the difference. The, the sense of the second chance. The God who gives us another chance to make it. Uh, General Oglethorpe was the founder of Georgia, the, the state of Georgia now, but it was a colony, of course, back then. Oglethorpe had been a general in the British Army. Uh, very strict, very uh, precise uh, expectations. Although he was a generous man in many ways, he was known as, as a philanthropist, uh, but he, he was also, uh, you told the line or else. And he founded Georgia with a large percentage of prisoners taken from the, the, the prisons of England. In other words, it would help the country. They wouldn't have to care for these people if he took them over and started another colony, which is what he did in Georgia, named after King George. Uh, and, and so he had these people there. Now, he took two other people with him uh, besides his, his uh, um, people that he was going to colonize with, which weren't all prisoners, but majority were. Took two, two other people. One's name was John, and the other was Charles. Their last name was Wesley. Uh, John Wesley came as chaplain, and Charles Wesley, John's brother, came as the secretary to General Oglethorpe. Both of them returned to England devastated. Uh, John was so discouraged, he went earlier, he quit, and came back, and, and in his time on the ship, uh, he experienced uh, uh, very brokenness. It led to his conversion at Aldersgate later on because he was just so discouraged. Charles came a little bit later, but while John was here, in a conversation with General Oglethorpe, uh, Oglethorpe made the statement, and he said, I never forgive. Never forgive. It kind of took John Wesley back a little bit, but he responded and said, uh, perhaps maybe a little bit too brazenly, then I hope, sir, you never sin. Uh, you know, but we all sin. We all fail. And God gives to us a second chance. He gives to us another opportunity uh, to try again. Now, there's a poem, and I, I wish I had it, but I, I you know, can't imagine that I couldn't find something. Uh, but uh, it's a poem about a little student who, in trying to write, and you can imagine kids when they try to write, I watch my grandchild, I cannot figure out what they write on their paper. Uh, it, it looks like chicken scratch. Uh, but, they, you know, and they smudge up and he erases and, and it's, and, you know, the paper tears. And, uh, it's just a mess, okay? Talking about Archie uh, in, in that moment. And, and uh, you go to the teacher. You say, teacher, I messed up this paper. Can I have another one? And the teacher says, no, you go back and sit there and you are flunked. Uh, you know, no, the teacher gives another paper, another chance. And the poet goes on to say that it's like me. My child goes for another sheet and is given it. And I go to the father for another day. And he gives it. Gives me a new chance, an opportunity to start again with a new day. Well, that's, that's kind of what it, it's about in Scripture. And, and our faith is, is based on that. Uh, East Daily Jones, I just got a magazine about East Daily Jones. Uh, he was on Time Magazine in 1930-something, 34, uh, as the greatest missionary of the 20th century. He was a tremendous missionary. Uh, but most of us have never heard of East Daily Jones. But he went to India as a, as a Methodist missionary back in the early 20th century, he dressed like the people of India. You know, he didn't stay, keep his European uh, clothes or his American clothes. He, he dressed like an Indian, and it set a whole new stage. If you remember, Mother Teresa did the same thing with the Sisters of Charity. They wore saris uh, instead of their regular habits, and, and, and the people could identify with that. It wasn't the missionary living up in the compound up on the hill, but down in the valley with the people. And that was E. Stanley Jones. But as he talked with people and, and sought to bring to them the message of Christ, one of the things that one of the, the people said to him, one of the Hindu people said, with all of our pantheon of gods, 
We have none that we can call love. Mm. Uh, different traits, different experiences, but none that we can call love. When Paul was writing to the church in, uh, in the New Testament, and he wanted to describe God, he, he could have chosen a, a number of different words that in the Greek mean love. Uh, probably our most common is phileo. Uh, we live in the state of Pennsylvania. We have that big city down by the coast called Philadelphia. That has two Greek words, phileo and anthropos. Uh, anthropos in Greek means brother or man. Uh, um, phileo means lover. Lover of mankind. That's what Philadelphia means. We have the word philanthropist, which means somebody who loves to give. And, and, and provides for anthropos, loves people, loves mankind, philanthropists. Um, we have uh, uh, the word, um, I think it just was in my head and then it just left it again. Uh, uh, <coughs> philatelist. Philatelist is somebody who loves stamps. And, and we, we have that. So, so it's, it's in a lot of our words. Well, phileo was a word that had to do with brotherly love, comradeship. If you saw the movie Vander Brothers, uh, that, was, that was what it was about. Uh, you got uh, uh, grandson, Austin, Austin, over in uh, Kuwait. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a brotherhood of, of those guys that hang together. Uh, they're, they're like brothers together. They, they become family to one another. That's, that's for that. Another word is eros. We get our word erotic. From it. Paul didn't use erotic, uh, or eros is the word. It's not a sexual term, it's a romantic term. Uh, it, it, it gives us uh, the goosebumps kind of feeling. Uh, that's eros. Uh, there's epithumia, which is sexual love in Greek. And that's in the Bible, ironically, when Jesus talks about his love for his disciples. It's that intense type of, of, of love that, uh, that's deep there in epithumia. Uh, there's also storge, which is a family kind of love. It's the same love as when uh, you, you, uh, your child comes to you and, and uh, they're hurt and you put your arm around them. I, I remember scraping my knees and, and stuff uh, happening and, and uh, I'd go to my mother and she would put balsam of myrrh on it. Now, if you don't know anything about balsam of myrrh, it's 80% alcohol. Uh, and, and it has uh, the myrrh in it, which is supposed to heal. But when you put that on an open cup, uh, it, it, it's, it's, you know, and there were times I'll bleed to death before I'll go to mom. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know? But, but she, would, she would put it on and then she would immediately start going to cool it down. You see, that's, that's story. I knew she cared. That was it. But Paul didn't use any of those words. Paul used the word of God. A word that the Romans considered weak. They would not feel agape. No commander would ever have agape. That's meaning I'm going to love you no matter what you do. I'm going to love you. But Paul said that's not weakness. That's strength. That's the power of God to change people's lives. And so agape became the word that he used to describe the love of God. The love that gives us a second chance. The love that, that knows that we fail. Seven times? Yeah. Maybe 70 times seven. But will not stop loving. There's nothing that, 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 that you can do to stop God from loving you. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you. You can't do it. Or God made, is its own generation. And that's what God is. And he wants us like that in our own life, to feel that same experience. I, I've got to skip on here and get, get going to the end here. But that's the gift of, of God's grace to us, is the new chance, the second chance. Now, God puts a lot of pressure on it. The Lord's Prayer, we just prayed a few moments ago, uh, talks about kingdom, uh, talks about temptation, uh, it talks about daily bread. It talks about forgiving. 
in Matthew chapter 7 or Luke, uh, I think it's chapter 6, where we find the Lord's Prayer. In both cases, there's a comment that follows it. In other words, when the disciples come to Jesus in Luke and say, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray, he, he gives them the Lord's Prayer. And he makes this comment. This is the only thing he makes a comment about. He says, if you do not forgive others their sins, neither will your Father in Heaven forgive yours. Now he doesn't comment about daily bread. He doesn't comment about the kingdom. He doesn't comment about temptation. He comments about forgiveness. That's the only thing he talks about. And, and he reminds us that forgiveness not only is life to the other person that we're forgiving, but it's life to us as we give it. And by the same token, not only when we've offended another person, does all this forgiven bring us hope, but it restores the relationship that's been lost. Uh, that's the strength of, of, uh, of forgiveness. And it's a character of our faith. Now, we talked about being made in the image of God and, and uh, bearing that image. Because God said, let's create man in our own image. One man said this, if horses had gods, they would look like horses. You know, we would make an image that looks like ourselves. You know, and we do that. And that's, that's, that's a human factor. But the Bible is in the business of saying, you're not going to create God in your image. Not if you're going to be faithful. You're going to be created in God's image. You're going to become like Him in His purposes. In 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 18th verse, there's a fantastic word that uh, needs to be... Well, I'm just going to quote it. It says, as we behold Him with unveiled faces, we are being changed into His likeness. Changed into His likeness from one degree of glory to another. Now, when you throw on the air conditioning in your house and it's 97 degrees outside and you walked into the house and it's 97 degrees plus in the house because no heat gets out and it just intensifies. You throw that air conditioner on and it goes from 97 to 70 right there, just like that, right? It takes time to change it. Uh, God's in the same business with us. He takes time to make us like Himself. It doesn't happen all at once. It takes time. Uh, Marjorie Williams wrote the story of the Velveteen Rabbit. In the Velveteen Rabbit, the, the rabbit talks to the skin horse and says, what is real? What is real? You see, because the nanny who had straightened up the nursery where the little boy was sick and and was there, uh, and he wanted the Velveteen Rabbit, and the nanny said, you don't need him, he's not real. And so the Velveteen Rabbit is wondering, what is it to be real? And he talks to the skin horse, the old rocking horse, and the rocking horse says, real is something you become. You know, it doesn't happen all at once. Generally, by the time you're real, your hair's been worn off, uh, you get loose and, 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 and weak in the joints, right, Ethel? Okay. Uh, we sit down, we can't get back up. Um, you know, uh, that's a part of it. But then he goes on to say, but to the people who don't understand, it doesn't make a difference because once you are real, you can't be. Um, once you are real, it doesn't matter. I forget just how she, she worded it now. But the point of it is, is that it takes time. Now there are things that can happen instantaneously in our faith. You know, when, when God saves us, it isn't, okay, I'll give you a week and a half to see if you can hold on to it. Uh, you know, no, it, 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 it's not that. It's, but the changes take time. And that's what the business is God is all about. is changing us into His image from one degree of glory Another. And then Paul goes on to say, and all this comes from God. It's not our doing. It comes from God. So, the story is, as, as the, as the uh, uh, scripture, uh, well, I'm over in 2 Corinthians now, uh, but as the scripture reminds us that God is at work in us to accomplish His good pleasure. Can you imagine that? He rejoices 
in making us like him. Now, my wife gets frustrated because I become like something she doesn't like. Okay? But God rejoices in my becoming like him. She probably would rejoice more if I became more like God. But it doesn't happen all at once. And it's going to take long. That's why I haven't died and gone to heaven. Because I'd wreck it if I was up there. And, and so God says, I've got to change more. So she has to put up with it uh, in the meantime. And, and that. But God is preparing us for something that we cannot imagine. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your grace and goodness to us again this day as we share in the blessings of your grace and of your life among us and of your work by your Spirit to make us into the image of your Son. Grant us your grace. Grant us your strength. Help us to have mercy as well. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, just so I can see you. So I'm all fogged up again. Uh, Paul writes to the church and he says, Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is when God gives you what you don't deserve. That's strength. That's hope. You don't deserve it. We talk about entitlement in our world. We don't, we're not entitled to anything. We receive it as a gift of grace. God's grace. But he says, mercy. Mercy is when you don't get what you do deserve. You know, we deserve to be thrown into hell and God says, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep working with you. I'm going to keep giving you the strength of grace so that you don't get what you deserve. You get what I want to give you. And then he says peace. Peace is the Hebrew word shalom. It really means well-being. It means health. There's an ancient prayer uh, that none of us will remember back in the days of, of John Wesley when we prayed and we said, uh, we have done those things which we ought not to have done and we've not done those things which we ought to have done. And then there's a phrase, and there is no health in us. Ah, that's, that's what we need is health, strength, healing. And God offers that in peace. The peace offering was an offering of well-being. It was to make us well again in God's grace. So, I wish to you, not because I can give it, but because God gives it grace, mercy, and peace. Amen. Amen.